Hey guys, Insightful Info here, and in this video, we're going to go through a complete guide on what you can do to potentially qualify yourself for the ZK Sync airdrop. So why should you care about this airdrop? Well, basically ZK Sync is a new L2 solution that's going to be coming out on Ethereum. Um, there's been several iterations of it are pushed out already. For some context, the optimism airdrop that happened in the past uh, would range you between like $400 and $1,800 at minimum. You did the minimum requirements all the way up to 40 k um, This is like a similar L2. And we can see that the TVL here is actually below Arbitrum, which is another L2 that will have airdrop potential things to do down the line. Um, that I've been talking about as well. So basically ZK Sync is going to be comparable to this optimism one. So it's basically a really good use of your time potentially to get the potential reward down the line. So to sum it up, basically there's the mainnet 1.0 actions that you could have done like six months ago, eight months ago. And now there's 2.0 testnet actions you can do. And then there's going to be 2.0 mainnet coming out in a month or so. So basically you're doing kind of the first set of actions you could have done for the 1.0 and the 2.0 stuff and then eventually there's probably going to be uh some other things you can do down the line when 2.0 is pushed out on mainnet it's gonna be going through this thread i made but in video form so in case you like listening over reading in the strategy we'll go through several protocols built on top of Z zk sync and some of these don't have a token so those could also get you a token as well the mainnet launches in a few months we'll cover 1.0 and 2.0 and after rb or their arbitrum airdrop this could probably be one of the best airdrops well, over the next year or so um i have a good degree of confidence that there's going to be a token announced based on essentially in their white paper and the reason these tokens are harder and more extensive and over a longer period of time is they're trying to basically make it targeted towards more real people and attract people who are trying to farm it through bots there's usually certain actions you have to do within time periods to qualify for the most potential airdrop you can okay so for mainnet 1.0 you need to start bridging funds to zk sync and you can do that in two ways there's the bridge on zigzag or using orbiter finance orbiter looks like this i know the uh website looks older or whatever but you're going to go from Ethereum mainnet to ZK Sync and it should cost around $5 or less than gas. This is the cheaper option of the two. Um, and then the other option is using the zigzag bridge, which is basically the same thing, but I think it's like $8 in fees and orbiters like two to $4, depending on gas, of course, this is assuming like gas is like under 20, at least you've never bridged like to another chain in DeFi before. You can just look up like how to basically bridge to any chain. I have a video on that myself, but it's basically the same thing. Um, a good way to go is to just send a little small amount at the start is like a, a test amount or the minimum you can that I will let you if you're like unsure, just so you don't uh, mess something up by sending all your money the first time on the first batch and in terms of the networks in your metamask it's just going to be on ethereum mainnet and then when you connect your wallet through the site it will show it on zk sync for the 2.0 testnet later down the road you'll have to have a, a different network but for this one you just have to be on eth mainnet so in zk sync mainnet 1.0 there isn't a lot of things to do the only main dap is basically zigzag here which is for bridging uh, and trading and then again for bridging i would if you were to pick one or the other for the bridging i would pick orbiter just because they don't have a token yet and it's a bit cheaper basically you'll connect your wallet and i'm just suggesting like do two to four swaps and then you go to market and then just pick a few dollars and then swap and then it will go through and then swap back and swap back and forth make sure you still have a bit of eth for gas by just interacting with it and doing a couple of transactions when you do your first transaction on zk sync it will also be an initialization fee which is like basically starting up that wallet on zk and it's like five or seven dollars but you only have to do that for the first time for that wallet uh just something to know the main site where you initially set up your wallet on a uh, 1.0 mainnet is uh wallet.zksync.io there's not much to do on the site basically so so you basically, you do your swaps in zigzag. You haven't already set up your wallet, you'll pay that fee. And then the only other thing to do in here basically is to mint an NFT. And to do that, you go to pinata.cloud and then you'll make a free account. And then basically you will upload uh, any picture you have, and then you'll get a CID number when you upload the picture in your pinata. And then when you go to mint the NFT under that field is where you're gonna put in that CID number. And the CID number is just a number associated with that image you uploaded to IPFS, which is like a decentralized file storage system for images. Now, last thing you can actually do is donate via the Gitcoin grants via ZK Sync. Um, and you actually do that by doing the checkout option. So you have to make a free GitHub account and sign in by the donation from the cart and then basically custom send how much you want via ZK Sync. Actually, I actually transferred an amount to the, uh, the donation address via the transfer function in the wallet here, because it was like the only other thing you could do at the time, but having to make a 
a Gitcoin account and sign in do through that whole process can be annoying so you could probably skip this one if you want to be honest all right so that was all the 1.0 stuff now we're going to go into the 2.0 testnet stuff this stuff's a bit more recent and the reason we're doing this is because 2.0 mainnet's coming out in a month or so so we want to do this first portion first in case the snapshot happens for kind of doing previous actions and you miss it and you never know until it happens basically um, but I still think there's probably still a decent amount of time to do this so if you found this helpful so far click that like button blah 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 psyops call to action to get you to interact because uh, if you do it helps show this video to more people and it makes me less sad when more people see the video okay so everything on the 2.0 mainnet is actually on a version of the early test network which is just like a test network for eth and nothing on the test net is real none of the money is real um, and if you don't see the go early test net make sure you go under your metamask settings and then go under advance and then scroll down to show test network so you're able to see it so why am i talking about all this go early stuff well basically the only way to start getting your initial eth on your 2.0 test net account is you have to basically either request funds from the faucet which you'll have to tweet out i'm not sure and that takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes at least to get or the other option is use the faucet and in order to use it you have to make a free alchemy account which is like a node provider um yes and i know this is like the third or fourth account i've told you to you'll need to make but that's why uh, password managers are helpful um but anyway so if you make that free alchemy account you can put in your wallet address to get uh testnet eth and then you can bridge from the go early testnet to the your zk sync one so either you got to use go early faucet and then bridge it to your wallet or use the faucet here and then tweet that out so all right so now you have testnet e so you can actually do transactions uh mint defense there going into action a lot of these actions on these dApps are going to be very similar um i'm going to go over the first one here but basically you're going to either use the faucet to get testnet coins to use in the dApp or you already have the coins and then you're basically going to do a couple swaps um do what you can to basically interact with the dApp or protocol so whether that's a couple swaps or you adding LP to the pool or doing a couple of trades or whatever. And there's probably, I'm going to go through like two or three here and then I'll, I'll link up to a bunch more of other potential ones you can do that have been pointed out by other people who make better threads basically than what I do or there's a similar type of content I should say. Yeah, so you can check that out, but I'm just going to go over a couple of them here. The first one's sync swap and this one's seems to be the more obvious one to do because it seems to be like the main swapping decks right now that they're suggesting to use. This is a good prompt as well. So when you go to connect your wallet, it's going to say you're not on the right network. So you're going to switch the network and it's going to prompt you to connect to the alpha testnet Gorley version. And then you're going to do that. Um, and I'll show the specs for the network here in a sec, in case you want to manually type it in. If you go into your MetaMask and then settings and then networks and then scroll down to the one we added here, the alpha testnet, then you can Here's basically the things you can type in if you want to manually add it in case you're not getting that prompt from that site there. So, so you'll get your test net tokens and then you'll want to do like two to four swaps. On here, make sure you have a bit of ETH left over to still do swaps. Then you're going to go to the pool, add a position, pick two of any of the coin you want. Then you're going to have to basically approve both of the coins, both that and that. And then you'll have to that to an LP. And then you could do that with another pair as well. And that's basically all you can do on uh, Think Swap right now. Next app to use is 1KX. And I'll, uh, for reference, I'll have all the links in the description here and including the thread, which has uh, all the links for everything in here as well. And you're basically just doing the same thing as the previous site. You're going to request tokens from the testnet, add liquidity to any pool. If you're having trouble getting the tokens, make sure you refresh and reconnect the wallet, trade whatever you need. Basically doing exactly what you did on the last site. Just interact with it. Everything on here is free anyway. It's no cost in any way at all. So ideally you have like 15 to 20 ish testnet transactions, at least on the wallet by the end of it, just to show that like there was some activity for reference. That's just like my opinion. There's no reason or research or logic behind that. The next one is going to be minting an NFT on Mint Square. Pick the ZK sync option and then you're going to go to mint. You're going to upload an image. And you're going to name it and then you're going to mint it that one's super straightforward and simple i think uh the testnet was like being taken down or being worked on as i'm making this because uh some of the dApps and the sites aren't loading but essentially all the routes and actions are the same just literally click around and just interact with it 
in any way you can and get your transaction count up. Basically, there's no cost and no money, uh, especially on the, the test net side of it. Um, I'll leave more links to more dApps or guide to use those dApps if you're interested in doing more. Basically, do the stuff on 1.0, do the test net stuff, try to get the transaction count up decently. And that's basically it. Disclaimer for all airdrops, like no one knows what the qualifications are or when the airdrop will be or if there actually will ever be one. So the reasons you're doing all this, these steps is to interact with kind of the base layer of the products as early as possible as like a legitimate user and have your wallet being, you know, registered for that by the smart contracts and you're not you're not trying to uh bot farm or civil farm ideally or if you do and you get marked for that uh you won't get anything anyway so yeah so there will likely be more actions to try and do once 2.0 goes live on mainnet so stay tuned for that and then the arbitrum airdrop as well that i mentioned at the beginning uh basically the tldr of that is there's an odyssey event there'll be things to do with certain protocols during a time period to get an nft and you want to get as many of those as you can throughout the odyssey event um it got to week two it's been paused or waiting for it to resume it's been a couple months it'd be nice if it resumes sometime soon so stay tuned for that because that's another one that i'm going to be following closely as well so if you found this video helpful like and subscribe share comment uh what you liked and disliked and what else you want to learn and i hope you found this info insightful take care bye for now